Hey, I'm your host, Angel Mara. Welcome to the It Happened Podcast. That's right, another podcast. Yep, out of the thousands out there. Uh, I'm going to have a lot of special guests, uh, singers, songwriters, actors, uh, both TV and radio personalities. We're going to talk music. We might even sing. We might even dance. We might even cook. Who knows? At the end of it all, you know what? If you're, you're laid back and it moved you, made you feel good, made you cry, laugh, then it happened. Cheers. All right, first up, dear friend of mine, great storyteller, singer, songwriter. Um, you're going to be blown away with some of the stories he's got to tell you. Enjoy, Frank Wilkes. You're listening to Angel Mar, and it happened. I love that. Frank Wilkes. Hi. <laughs> you look beautiful. I do? You do. You look lovely. You never change. Well, that's life, eh? You never change, man. My mom's 96. How do you do it? What do you I use? I figure it? I'll live to be 96, too. My mother's 89. It's going to be 90 in a few months. She's 96, your mom? Yeah. God bless so her. So I figure that's why I look so good, because I'm going to live as long as my mom. Look dashing. The glasses and everything's all contoured nicely. I have my mom's jeans. So what's going on? What are you up to, man? Well, I'm in the middle of moving. I'm retired now. As long as you're not, you know, I'm not even going to say it. So you're retired from, not music. The fire safety business. Let's let people know that. And you're going to keep singing until the day you die. What's going to be another? In about another four. 50 years, 50 <laughs> years, something. <laughs> Which is, uh, I hope. <laughs> I'm dying. <laughs> I'll be 100 and what, 20? <laughs> so we got a lot of time. So um, you're moving um, five hours north. That's right. Yeah, to a town called Field, Ontario. I'll be outstanding in my field. I'm going to give you <laughs> apple trees to take with you. All right, I, killer. I, I got, they're about that big right now. Perfect. You can put, You got to take and at we, least two. We will so nurture it, and we will make sure it grows. And I will come to eat the apples. When they grow. Yeah, man. In about three years. <clears throat> so tomorrow night. That's how long it um, takes I want to play tree. a song with you tomorrow night. You're okay. playing at uh, the, the Duke. Duke. The Duke Live. The how old is the Duke? Oh, man, that's like a historical building. Like so from the four, somebody asked me that the other day, and I, I I didn't have an answer. I know it's I said late forties, you know, before probably, that. maybe even before that when it was the young Duke, the Duke of York, the Duke of York. That was the original name. Wow, so Sweet Daddy that, Siki was there every Saturday with his country band, a famous wrestler from yeah. the seventies, right? Yep, yeah. and uh, and to this day he's doing karaoke. On Saturdays at the Duke. Wow. He's an old fart now. <laughs> what did I want to talk to you about? I wanted to talk to you about <clears throat> all this stuff that i just been learning about you on uh, on YouTube. All the stuff about um, with the Buffalo uh, Springfield Revisited. Like, Oh, yeah. I know yeah. you kept trying to tell me when I was playing with you. You're like, you know, I did this, man. You know, I did this. And I'm going, I, okay, Frank, I know, Frank. I, I know, Frank. I was just nervous trying to learn the tunes, right? That was one of my highlights you kept of trying my to, life. <laughs> unbelievable, man. Yeah, I was with Buffalo Springfield Revisited. Yeah, we had Bruce it. Palmer on the original bass player. We had Dewey Martin, the original drummer. And uh, from time to time, Stephen Stills even showed up. I, I saw played. that. And Stan? And, Stan and, Andersby and on guitar. guitar yeah. And uh, Bob Fredrickson on guitar. And we had a guy named Harlan Specter on keyboards. Unbelievable, man. Back then. And then we got a different keyboard player. I forget his name. He was really good, though. So here you were. It was you and Stan, I believe, right? Yes. You and Stan. <clears throat> and I think you were looking for a bass player, right? You were looking for a bass player. This is what I remember. Oh, no, no. It was me and Johnny. Me and, and me and Johnny had a gig in Niagara Falls. So it was you and Johnny, but Stan came in afterwards? Johnny, or? my brother, Johnny. Oh, I know, I know. The um, late, great John Wilkes. Yes. Um, anyway, me and Johnny uh, needed a bass player, and we, someone told us, well, Bruce Palmer's 
This is what I want to get to. Available. How the fuck? How the fuck did he come in the picture? Like, um, well, he was living on Willow. Right around the corner from Quigley's. What? Quigley's bar. I didn't know that. He he just got back from touring with Neil on wow. the uh, Berlin tour. I didn't know that. And uh, Neil decided to go solo after the European tour, part of the tour. Right. Um, and Bruce came back to Toronto. And he was living on Willow. And uh, someone told me about him that he he heard me sing at uh, Quigley's. And he was impressed. So uh, I said, well, give me, where does he live? Give me his number. I want to go yeah, yeah, meet yeah. him. And, you know, so me and Johnny went there, and uh, there he was, Bruce Palmer. Wow. Man. He's hammered out of his head, right, <laughs> with, with empty alcohol bottles. Alcohol, wow. you know, like the heavy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All around him, like, and uh, Spandex J was living with him. And when you showed up, did he recognize you? Did or did he just, he just had just heard of you, right? No, he, he didn't meet me at all. He just heard about me. He just heard about you, right. So right. I went there and he was happy to meet me and everything, but he, he said he was unavailable to go play bass for me right. that weekend. So what was the transition? He, so he turns to me and says, but I know someone who is. And down the stairs comes Spandex J dressed in spandex. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I'm looking down. I'm going. Oh, you want him to play bass? I haven't me? heard that name. Oh my god, I forgot all about that guy, man. Jay Thomas with the long gray hairs, long black hair, and oh, and a nice, great guy, right? Yes, he was awesome. He played with um, uh, Ray Materic. Wow. See, we can just keep talking forever. Now that you brought him up, I'm, yeah. I'm going right back to Bar None. Yeah, Bar that's, None. That's where I met him, right? Yeah. yeah. And he was a fucking weird looking cat. Yeah, and and he was great. Yeah, yeah. No, he was a great guy, absolutely. But, so he you know. ended up he ended up being my bass player. Wow. So and and all that time went by uh, about a year or something like that, and then uh, I reunited with Bruce Palmer wow. and started a band with him with Al Prosser, who just won a hundred grand in the Winterio. And he was a drummer, this guy, right? Yes, Al Prosser, right? Drummer. Yeah. So that's where we got Stan Endersby. To play guitar so it was a four piece and yeah. we called it music with a k and then it morphed into the buffalo springfield revisited and then you guys ran into uh, some problems with the uh, i heard something about the that you couldn't use the name or something right oh and yeah then, and we, then, uh, Neil we, were, said, we were in niagara falls playing. it was niagara falls buffalo right we were across the, the border and we went to neil's concert and we were with Neil and his manager, Elliot Roberts. Was it his manager that came up and said, His hey, manager guys... said, I'm putting an injunction against you guys to oh, stop you uh, from using the that name. That must have stopped your heart, too. And <laughs> guess what happens? Neil turned to him and says, no, you're not. Right? Right. They can right do on, it. They man. can go ahead and do it. It's no problem. Right on. And he was so nice you to us. You got to love Neil for that, He man. was great. Oh, uh, uh, that's what a, a great thing, story, eh? man. Yeah. What a thing, eh? So you went from like, holy fuck, this guy's gonna. I was stopping my. I started shaking in my boots. When, and with this guy was me. He was mean. And how long did it go from him telling you, you know, you can't use the name to Neil saying it's okay? What, what was a a split second? <sighs> Neil just turned and said, "No, you're not." Right oh, so away. That's, okay, good. <laughs> Stopped him in his tracks. <laughs> so you were, yeah, that's good. And man. then two weeks later, him and Steven signed a contract. Stephen Stills. Even allowing us to use Stephen the name. Stephen Stills, right? Yeah. As long as Bruce and Dewey were in the band. Which they were, man. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck, so, what a great story, man. But gradually, we got rid of Dewey because he was a pain in the ass. I got tears in okay? my eyes, man. Yeah. And we ended up with Scotty. Right. The guy that played on my Freedom Express album yeah, yeah. that you played on. Yeah. I read it first. It said, Frank Wilkes, retiring. I'm like, okay, what? I assume that, you know, you weren't going to play music for a while. No, no, I'm just retiring from my fire business. Because, so. uh, let me finish, I was going to say, retiring my ass. He's not going to fucking stop playing music. No. Not you. Of course not. <laughs> so I didn't realize that you were retiring from your, your little business There's, there's the places side. to play up north, too. You know, yeah. I can get gigs and... Well, I know you're not going to stop playing. And that. get my <laughs> band to come up, you yeah. know. And I think if they cut your friggin' hands off, you'd still fight, figure a way to play. Right, I'd I'd be able to sing still. What's a famous guy there? Uh... No more hand jobs though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I 
like, I'd take a chance. Come on, baby, bring over that fucking that robot hand here. <laughs> <That> robot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, never mind. Um, so tell me about LA Forum, man. Oh, fuck. what was the first gig you did with these guys? That was I just it. want to know about the stuff because I never gave the first you the gig I ever did in in LA when I moved down to LA with right. Bruce and Stan was at the LA Forum. The f- first in, gig in front, of, yeah, Holy in front fuck. of fifty thousand people, <laughs> and uh, Stan Andersby's mom passed away, so he was he wasn't there for that. He he was in Toronto for his mom's funeral and stuff. Wow! So he missed that one. <laughs> the timing on that was bad, I guess. But you know, it was back. still awesome. And I met so many. I saw a bit famous of it, people there. I saw like, you call up uh, John. Uh, John, John Sebastian. Sebastian. I yeah. saw you call yeah. him up. I'm like, what the fuck? He played harp with us, yeah. and uh, Peter Fonda introduced us and came out again. And says one more. <laughs> so what's going through your head at this time? You must, For what it's worth, you're just sitting there going, "What's happening to me right now?" Right? Yeah. Because I had moments like that too happen to me. Oh, I ended up under the stage. I I went off the wrong side, <laughs> and I was lost, un, under all the scaffolding. Right? Guess who came down and found me? Bonnie Raitt. Wow. She comes up to me. She's wearing a white T-shirt, too. Tight. <laughs> she looked good. Red hair, red hair by Craggy. I'm sorry. Oh, wow. Um, anyway, she came down and says, who are you? Right. You know, because yeah. nobody knew who I was, right? All of a sudden, there's this guy up in Buffalo Springfield revisited singing, right? Yeah. That's not Neil, not Stephen, and not Richie. So she was going, who are you? And I'm I'm like this with my shirt wiping the sweat off my brow and I'm going, I'm Frank. She goes I'm the singer. And I look at her and I, I, I knew her, but I wasn't sure who it was, right? And I said, Well, who are you? And she goes, I'm Bonnie. I go, Bonnie Raid? <laughs> Goldie Buck, wow. nice to meet you. I said, I'm lost under under here. She goes, Well, come with me. She and was this, like my mom, you know, like, time, Well, this, come with me. She takes me by the hand and They're takes, not trying to introduce you somewhere, are they? At this time, are they like, uh, they're, they're introducing the band and you're fucking lost now? No, this is after our performance. Oh, after the performance? After the performance, I went off the wrong oh, okay. side and ended up... Well, there's nothing wrong with that. Down below the stage, <laughs> under the stage, right? And that's when Bonnie showed up and found me. You're looking for the party, and right? And she takes me by the hand and says, come with me. You know, and she takes me out and puts me, takes me to the back room where right. all the stars are sitting and... Nice. Getting ready for their part of the show, right? <clears throat> Chris Christopherson was there. Uh, Stevie Wonder. Even wow. Neil Young was there. <laughs> wow. Um, that had to be weird a bit, a little bit. Mel's Lofgren from Bruce yeah, Springsteen's band that. was there. Um, little Steve was there. I you think... should have seen when Stevie Wonder showed up. Tell me about it. It was like the par- the water in Moses. Yeah. The water parting. People just, it's like the water parting as he walked in and everyone's bowing yeah. down to him, you know, <laughs> I met like I he's met, a god. I met Stevie Wonder when he played. Uh, it was amazing. Maple Leaf Gardens, that was Maple Leaf Gardens. Because my manager at the time was Arthur Fogel, right? So, you know Dave Beatty? Yeah. Dave Beatty was, every time, whatever show there was, Arthur wanted me to go all, all these shows, right? So I'd be on the VIP list all the time and... Every show I went to was Dave Beatty. That's how I met him, right? I just walk up and you go, Angel, yeah, come follow me or go over there and take this guy and bring him over there. And I'd always be right beside the stage or but I'd always end up backstage. You know, so when I met yeah. Stevie Wonder, it was the same. Yeah. I just remember when he was singing, everybody was crying, man. Everybody was fucking, it was like a spiritual like Yeah, awakening. Yeah, just amazing, man. Yeah. Amazing what the yeah, yeah, there's a lot of guys like him. <laughs> and <laughs> they just when once they open their mouth, it's like yeah, you know, wow. And your, Let's take, and your soul just relaxes and enjoys it, sucks it all in. <laughs> what was I going to say about? Uh, so who else was on that bill? Oh, it's hard to remember. Um, I saw the thing that you were uh, uh, Jerry Lewis telethon. You did. Yeah. <laughs> what was that like? <laughs> that was fun. Um, did we you meet, did you meet Jerry? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, of course. And his hair, his hair was all greased back, and the back he goes, of, of his, course, his back of his head looked like a duck's ass. 
Is that right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> anyway, he was really nice to us. Casey Kasem. I love it. Casey Kasem brought us to him. Casey Kasem. Yeah. Holy fuck. I haven't heard that you know, name. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Top what 40. Did, the right? top, that's right. That's <laughs> Casey Kasem. Yeah, he's the one that was, he was the host on the show at was, the time. And another guy, an Olympic, some blonde-haired guy, I forget his name. He was a host as well. And uh, Jackie Gleason was there. Wow. Fucking. That's an unbelievable, man. I got to meet all these that's, iconic actors. That's right? awesome, you know, like, and, Jack, and Jerry Lewis was the funniest guy ever. Yeah. The funniest. Well, that's what he was famous for, Hands man. down. Funniest guy <laughs> ever. Wow. With with Dean Martin, they were a perfect team. Yeah, yeah. No, Dean I being the smooth and great guy in him. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it happened with Angel Mar. Honestly, it, uh, it did. Look what what I do you got? got? What's that? You brought a guitar. Johnny's. Oh, no way. <laughs> yep. Wow, man. He's got an Inuit on here. That's John Wilkes' guitar. Wow. Wow, man. Thank you for bringing that, Frank. And it's in tune and everything. Well, I'm in, I'm in a different tuning. Wow. So, um, anyway, Johnny passed away last October, right? It was a tough, tough day. Yeah, it was tough. A tough time. So then, just when did David Crosby pass away? Anyway... Three so months ago, that's when he passed was away, three of, months ago? A lot of talk about David Crosby online and stuff. And they they showed the way he used to, he created his own tuning. Okay? Oh, right, okay, I knew that. So I yeah. learned his tuning. So I have my guitar, Johnny's guitar, tuned in the David Crosby tuning. So in, instead of... Uh, What's the top string? E, A... Oh, so it instead is... Instead of E, A, D, G, B, E, right. it's E... B, D, G, A, D. You know, I, I, I bet you. Okay. So, do you anyway, play some? as soon as I tuned the guitar into this tuning, I started learning chords in this tuning right away. It was like, it was meant to be or yeah. something. I don't know. I don't know what it was. So, I started learning these chords. And then I learned the... So, you know, I, I learned all these cool chords, right? Wow. And they sound nice. That's like, beautiful. Especially this one. Isn't that wild? So Absolutely. I came up with this song. Do you want me to sing it? I'd love for you to sing it. Okay. It's called uh, Life's for Learning. So this is a brand new song written like last week I wrote it. Twist and turn. Oh, sorry. It's all right, man. Twist and turn in life's for learning how to live. I've been yearning for some things that I can give. And I've been down so many roads. Watching how my life unfolds Always passing through the times of my life All my paths I don't regret too many things There's still a lot of things in life that I can bring Making footprints in the sand Learning how 
how to understand Always passing through the time of my life Carry on, it's not too late to make a change You go through life learning how to rearrange Going left instead of right Live your day and dream the night When your life is done, you'll drift into the light You move me, man. I'm still learning. You how move to play. me, Frank Wilkes. <laughs> so on the lineup tomorrow night at uh, the Duke. Who's yes, playing I'm with at you? the Duke tomorrow who's night. Who's playing with you tomorrow night? Uh, I've who, got who's the Chris, the... Chris Bishop on bass. Uh, Mark Bell on the drums. I know Mark. Beautiful and, guy. And uh, Paul Gandhi on keyboard. And me. Paul. Do I know Paul? White hair guy, Paul. Yeah. Oh, I think I know Paul. Yeah, he's fantastic. I love him. I'm going to be there tomorrow night. I'm coming, man. At one point, I had Gordon McKinnon on keyboards, and wow, he's really good. Oh, yeah, absolutely, man. But he doesn't sing like Paul. Yeah. So. Does a drummer sing? Uh, no, the drummer. I used to sing with you, man. The drummer don't sing, no. He just keeps the beat. He's a great drummer, Mark. He's awesome. Um, What was I going to say? And then there was White Buffalo, right? What was that? What lineup was White that? White Buffalo was when I get got came back from L.A. Right. And I was pretty messed up. Anyway, um, we called it White Buffalo. And uh, then that ended, and then uh, that's when uh, Big Medicine came into play. I with wanted you, with to, Brother John. Yeah, we wanted to continue with the name White Buffalo, um, but. Uh, Big Medicine's changed. a great name, man. White Buffalo, we found out, means big medicine. Oh, is that right? Yeah. <laughs> it's like big medicine. So again, the white. It's was symbolic. the white for cocaine? <laughs> no. Anyway, uh, we called the band Big Medicine. I'm glad we, you gave that up, buddy. We recorded... Uh, you don't want to talk big, about it, do you? The Big Medicine <laughs> CD. You don't want to talk about the cocaine days, eh? I'm glad it's over for you, though. Yeah, I went through I'm 15 so fucking years proud of... You, buddy. of uh, Snorting and mostly smoking it. We all went through that period, buddy. We were all nuts with that yeah. shit. Everybody yeah. went nuts with it. But Wasted 15 years of my life. Right? This is why I'm bringing up that I want to talk about that stuff now because every time you wanted to talk about that, I think we were pretty fucked up. Either drunk or something. And you were like, I played the forum, you know? And I'm like, yeah, good. That Sure, sure you did, Frank. <laughs> I'm just being honest. That, I yeah. toured all over I America was, I was with, like, yeah, okay. with them playing all the forums. You know, every show we did was like 20,000 and up people. That's there amazing, There were concerts man. we were doing. and uh, Were you under the influence when you were doing that? No, no. Did I was take completely straight and sober. Awesome. Bruce, That's good, man. Bruce and I decided that that project was worth getting sober for and clean. Awesome, man. So we did. But, you know, that was back in the 80s. I wasn't into the coke then. See, because I thought... I didn't do cocaine until, like, 1991. I thought that you were introduced to all that shit on account of being with all those guys. No, it was... Being in all... We were living in LA, were It was near the end of the stint that I got introduced to cocaine. What a fucking waste of time, eh? Yeah. What a waste... When I think yeah. back, like... <laughs> if any of you out there are back. doing cocaine like that, Stop. Do yourself a favor. Plus, you want to talk about Frank, but this is all about you. I want to know. 
Something you wanna you wanna tell her you want people to know about you, man. Hmm. Cause I wanna know too, man. You're excited obviously to to move up to yeah, and move gonna, up north. Yeah, I'm just going up. I and your beautiful wife. Mainly, I want to spend more time with my mom because she's 96, right? She'll be Absolutely. 97 in September. So, how much time do I have? So mom's with my up mom? there. Mom's up mom's there. Mom's up there in Sturgeon Falls. Okay, I didn't in know that. Long-term care. And she's been there now since Dave died. Wow, I didn't know this, Frank. And I figure, you know, how much time does she have left here? Yeah. I'm going there to spend as much time with her as I can. Awesome, man. And I don't care about all this and city, of course you, city you're, life your crap. Your beautiful wife's coming with you? And how long oh, have you been with your wife again? It's been... Uh, 15 years now. Nice. And a couple before that, we were just... Hanging out first? Hanging and then, out. Yeah. Nice, man. Heike Heinze. So how does, she, how does Heike feel about that, about moving up there? Oh, she's... she's looking forward to it? It's her idea. <laughs> Good, man. You know, and I, I retired. And, you know, I'm not looking back. I'm going up there to start a new life. Beautiful, man. That's beautiful. And survive. yeah, I'm thinking of doing the same thing. You know, you never know what's going to happen <clears throat> in this world these days with uh, Russia and all that. Yeah, I'm scared. Yeah. Well, you know, what if a thing? A lot of people uh... is sent over here a missile, right? <laughs> you know, and I'm far enough up north to survive. <laughs> Sorry. So there's many reasons why you're moving up there, then, right? All right. You're there's running away from reasons, moms. Uh, you're yeah. going up to see mom. I want to, and my brother Gord's there, and Janet, and my nephew, and his. Family. So it's all good. It's all it's good. All good yeah. That's it. That's what I'm need thinking to say. about. Even Absolutely. driving school bus, you know. Yeah. For something to do when I'm up up there. Just you know? go and keep writing songs, man. I'll be. I'm gonna setting up a studio in my garage. Keep writing songs. You want to play something else? Wanna hear one of Johnny's songs? I feel songs? fucking nothing. I got nothing in my hands. Yeah, let's hear one of John Wilkes' songs, man. Prairie winds, won't you carry me? Fly me high into the sky. Take me to my family where I live until I die. Prairie winds, won't you carry me? Back to where my brother died And I can say I love him one more time Prairie winds will keep on blowing Prairie winds will keep on knowing That my heart belongs to the ones at home And the sun will keep on shining As long as I am guided by direction From the prairie wind If that wind will carry me to the place where I was raised To the loving arms of my family I'm counting all the days Prairie winds, won't you carry me back home? Prairie winds, won't you carry me back home? Prairie winds, you are an old friend The stormy nights and daylight breeze Bring a smile to me When your sleeves caress my arm Blowing out across the plains You bring the dust, you bring the rain I touch your guiding hand Across the sacred land And if that wind will carry me To the place where I was raised To the loving arms of my family I'm counting all the days Prairie winds, won't you carry me back home? Prairie winds, won't you carry me back home? ba 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 To the place where I was raised To the loving arms of my family I'm counting all the days Prairie winds, won't you carry me back home? Prairie winds, won't you carry me back home? Prairie winds, won't you carry me back home? And that was a composition by the late Joan Wilkes. That's right. He wrote that song. 
Oh, man. He recorded a version um, at the uh, studio at, on Ontario Street and Queen Street there. Yeah. I, and, I was there with him once. And I recorded it with John in PEI. Wow. At a major sound studio with Paul Milner and so, Dave Fitzpatrick. I remember Dave. Yeah. And Greg, I haven't his seen, brother Greg. All these guys you're bringing up, I haven't seen in at least 10 years. Longer. Right? Longer. They live in Newfoundland. Wow. And how long have they been there? A long time. Wow. Yeah. Last time I saw Johnny was uh, at least, probably I'd say five years ago. My that brother? Long. That long. Really? Yeah. Why so long? Uh, well, the COVID thing was what? That was two oh, years yeah, ago. That was, and before everyone that. Everyone stayed home. Before that, I hadn't seen him in uh, at least a couple of years. We always kept in touch, of course, on the phone. Yeah. And he was always all over the place. Right? You know, Johnny, right? He was in uh, Yellowknife. Or... He was everywhere. He was all over the place. Yeah. Um, do you want to talk about um, I'm Not Neil Young? Yeah, absolutely. It's a musical play that I co-wrote with Don Lamru. You met Don. Yeah. And... Uh, we got to let everybody know that it's on, on YouTube, right? Yes. Can... I am not Neil Young, the musical. Yeah. It's about 75 minutes long, and it's just me with a lot of multimedia and backtracks and stuff. I, you know what? It's put together real well. I was and surprised it, when I saw it. It's basically the story of my touring with Buffalo Springfield <laughs> revisited. So. Yeah, man. What an amazing story, brother. Like, yeah. fuck. You know, it's... I know that when you're in it, when you're in the middle of it, it's it's hard to take it all in as it's happening. Yeah. You know? Because, I, 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 yeah, I've had things happen to me, too, where you're like, nobody's going to fucking believe where I am right now. Right? Yeah. Did that go through your head? <laughs> Who's going to believe me where I am right now? I'm fucking talking to this guy. Nobody's ever going to believe this. Right? Hot yeah. tubs. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I had hot tubs. <laughs> My wow. manager had a hot tub. Yeah. You wouldn't believe the things you <laughs> the things you'd find in this hot tub. Uh, it, was it was gross. It was gross. There was a studio. Remember Cherry Beach? Yeah. When we started recording, that the guy put a hot tub in there, and uh, so I'd come back. I had to go a wedding. Go to a wedding once. I came back, and the whole fucking band's in the hot tub with the secretary. <laughs> <laughs> what, what happened to it? How did, it, how did it come apart? What happened? Well, uh, in nineteen. 19- what year was it when it did come apart? Nineteen ninety. We were on a tour in my motorhome. I had a motorhome down there, twenty eight foot motorhome, a Calypso, Dodge Calypso. <laughs> were you living in in L A? Were you living there? I was living there for six years. Did you say Topanga Canyon to me? Topanga Canyon. See, yeah. I remember some things, eh? Yeah, yeah. So um, anyway, we, we were on a tour right. in my motorhome, and we decided instead of taking the uh, the high road right. from Florida. Back to L.A., we took the the road that goes through the bo- Texas border. Right. So we pull in, and uh, everything's okay. Bruce is passed out in the back on the floor. <laughs> this is 1990, right? 1990. 1990, okay. We're on our way back to L.A. after touring fucking for like a month. Anyway, um, we pull into the thing. They ask all their questions. Everything's fine. They said, go ahead. And then fucking this asshole pedal steel player we had filling in for Stan. Uh Uh-oh. Goes, oh, there's a Canadians on here. Fucker. So, pardon my French. You and Stan. Yeah. No, no. Me and Bruce. Stan wasn't there. Me and Bruce. So they they say, oh, pull. They pull us back over again. Right. And they take me and Bruce in. And uh, I bullshitted my way out and said, I'm not in the band. It's my motorhome. I'm just on vacation. I'm driving them around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they they believed that. But Bruce, another story. They said, are you in the band? And he said, yeah. Uh Yeah. (laughs) You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, they they gave him three days to to leave the country. He got deported. 
Yeah, you know, with Class Comics Live, you did something with Class Comics Live. And that's too. when the shit hit the fan. Okay. We, just went, we went back to Topanga Canyon to our the Topanga Ranch motel where we were staying. And uh, Bruce, the first thing he did, went into the liquor store and bought a big bottle of fucking booze and downed it. It was over after that. Bruce became a basket case again. Wow. It was sad, very sad. So the whole thing, how long did the whole thing last? Five, six years. That long? Yeah. yeah. Wow. We were on tour most of the time. And and financially? Was... We never had a house to live. Right. Because we were always on the road. But the money was okay? You were making good money? I never made money. Why, man? Because I didn't care. I was taken care of everywhere we went. We were like treated. You didn't give a shit about money, right? I didn't care. I was I was in Buffalo Springfield, yeah. revisited the lead singer. I'm in fucking heaven. That's enough for me. Uh, so you now you know you don't even have to pay me to do that. Now you know all those <laughs> bands. Know, back then, I mean, it was like a dream come true, right? Yeah. Now you know all the big bands back then. Yeah. Well, were like, I toured were, with everybody. They were like 19 years old. I'm just we saying. toured with everybody. Yeah. The spirit. The, the the Chambers Brothers, um, fucking so many bands I can't remember. Them oh, the, all. the point I was making Three Dog was, Night. Yeah, the um, point I was making was these bands, the Commodores, when they were what nineteen years old, right? They're like nineteen, twenty years old. They're signing all these fucking things, and they they did like four albums in that sold millions, and then they were broke because they did that same thing you just said. They didn't give a shit. They're like, wait, fuck, we were famous. I just signed a big record deal. They didn't, they didn't care about money. Well, they had money in the bank. See, I didn't have money in the bank. I, I just got on a plane, went to L.A. Yeah. With nothing. That no had, the whole experience is I priceless, right? I just split up, with, got divorced with my wife, had my son, Billy. Yeah. I left it all to go do that. And and I never went back. You got it, yeah, man. It's a big Until sacrifice. Until ninety two, I went back, May of ninety two, and then I went crazy writing. I I wrote like so many songs. I just kept making CDs of my own. Yeah, I've got like twelve CDs now, with it's, like it's amazing, sixteen uh, to twenty songs per CD. It's amazing when you talk to somebody that's not a musician or songwriter, and uh, you talk music with them. They're like. Oh, the guys in fucking Pink Floyd, oh, they wrote that. They were all fucked up. All well, the Rolling Stones, are, I said, no, 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 man. You can't write songs when you're fucked up. But people don't think that. They think, oh, you get take a bunch of ass and get all fucked up and you write classics. No, it's not the way it works. <laughs> and I'm like, not even close. No, 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 no. <laughs> I hate to break it to you, but no, it doesn't work like that. No, drugs, not do, as fucked drugs up as you do think. not help your creativity. Yeah. Man, they exactly. inhibit everything. Um, so, you know, you want to be creative. Don't do drugs. <laughs> exactly. Frank, you know what, man? Drinking's okay uh, if you don't drink too much. I'm Like me. I'm so happy that you came by and uh, did this with me. I'm getting I'm emotional. I'm so happy, right too. I'd love to see you always, man. You know that. I'm glad you're doing something creative again. <sighs> well, you know, it, it's I'm doing this to, so that people can hear people's stories, you know? And you know what? When you hit our age, there's always something on the clicker that you want to... Something different. <laughs> Let's see what fucking Angie's doing or what Frank is doing or what, you know... What and have so you been up not? to for the past? That's too much five to get years. into right now. Taking care of my mom. Yeah, good. That's what I've been doing right now. That's what I'm going to be doing. Yeah, taking care of my mom. Yeah, that's I've been doing that since ninety. We're moving ninety May twentieth, two thousand fifteen. Yeah, We're gone May twentieth. We're out of here. Well, brother, you know I wish you the best, man. Let's go out with a song. What do you think? All right. We, yeah. This is the one we went through earlier. So. It's a it's a blue blue it's day. It's a blue blue day. All right. It's a blue blue day today because the skies are completely blue, not one cloud. Perfect, man. I love you, Frank. I love you too, buddy. I love you, man. I'm going to sing with you. Put your toys away. Cuz it's a blue blue day. I know you want to play You're gonna anyway On a blue, blue day Blue, blue day Love is on your mind On your mind Love is hard to find Hard to find When it's a blue, blue 
day It's a blue, blue day When your heart is feeling kind of down And there's no one else around That's a blue, blue day A blue, blue day When love is on your mind on your mind Love is hard to find It's hard to find When it's a blue, blue day When it's a blue, blue day Yeah, I love that When your heart is feeling of down and there's no one else around that's a blue blue day it's a blue blue day when love is on your mind love is on your mind love is hard to find hard to find when it's a blue blue day it's a blue blue day when Frank goes away. I love you, brother. All the best. <laughs> Peace and love and music. Uh. It Happened, the podcast with Angel Marr and a bunch of people who just like telling old war stories now.